Hello and welcome. I'm your host, Neil Howard, here on Health Professional Radio. Our guest is Dr. William Sanborn of the University of California, San Diego, and he's joining us on the program this morning to discuss his presentation of the pivotal phase three data for Stellara as a maintenance therapy in patients with moderate to severe UC or ulcerative colitis. Uh, Thanks for joining us on the program this morning, Dr. Sanborn. Thank you for inviting me. You're here to talk about this phase three data for Stellara. Well, uh, just to remind the uh, listeners, in uh, studies where we evaluate patients with ulcerative colitis for a new therapy, we conduct studies in in two parts. Induction, uh, and the goal during there is to uh, take patients who have moderately to severely active ulcerative colitis and induce response, induce remission, induce endoscopic or uh, colonoscopic uh, improvement or healing, Um, and then patients who respond to that initial induction therapy and have had a short-term response, we continue them into a second part of the study, which we call a maintenance trial, and that's what we're here to talk about today. So in those patients who get maintenance uh, therapy, they initially, at the first, at the beginning of part one of the study, had moderately to severely active ulcerative colitis. They got treated with Stellara, and they significantly improved or went into a full remission. And then at the beginning of the maintenance trial, they were randomly assigned to continue Stellara, uh, given as a subcutaneous injection of 90 milligrams every eight weeks or every 12 weeks, or to um, receive uh, a matched placebo. And then we looked uh, out over the next um, over 40 months until the patients had had a total of one year of therapy, and we assessed uh, how they did over that uh, year of treatment. What are the details and characteristics of the study subjects? How many uh, study subjects were involved? Yeah, so there were um, the study subjects are um, in their... Uh, 40s. They uh, will have all had a variety of previous treatments. About half of the patients had previously been treated with other biologic agents such as uh, Remicade or Humira, uh, even Intevio, and would have failed those agents. Other patients would have failed immune suppressive medications like azathioprine or 6-mercaptopurine, uh, many patients would have failed steroids, and about half the patients in the trial were taking steroids like prednisone at the time that the trial uh, began. So this is, and then the patients, you know, I mentioned earlier that they had moderate to severely active uh, disease. Mm-hmm. That means when you do a flexible sigmoidoscopy or a colonoscopy, you see quite severe uh, inflammation and ulceration in the bowel at the time of the scope and that the patients are having quite a lot of rectal bleeding and uh, diarrhea. And of course, over the course of the trial, we're looking to see the the diarrhea and the rectal bleeding and the uh, endoscopic inflammation uh, all improve. So that that's kind of what the patients uh, look like. There's, you know, just a sick refractory a group of patients who finally uh, responded to, you know, a different type of medication. Was there any period of repair after the failure of these other therapies before Stellara was implemented? The the way that we usually design the studies, if the patients are taking oral medications, mm-hmm. uh, immune suppressives like azathioprine or 6 uh sometimes an oral medication called mesalamine, and oral medications like prednisone, steroids. Those uh, drugs were actually continued along with the study medications, Stellara or placebo, during the trial. And then in the maintenance phase of the trial, we would systematically try to withdraw the steroids uh, to look for a so-called steroid sparing benefit. As far as the prior biologic use, uh, we required an eight-week washout from the last dose of Remicade or Humira or Entevio before the patients began the new study medications. It's not so much a matter of repair as it is just letting the other uh, previous biologics wash out a bit so that they're not confounding the results of the study. Well, what about uh, safety and side effects? Well, uh, in the course of the trial, we are measuring 
you know, all kinds of adverse events, serious adverse events, particularly looking for infections, cancers, that sort of thing. And what we found was uh, that the rate of uh, adverse events and serious adverse events were, you know, very similar, almost identical on uh, patients who received placebo versus patients who received each of the two doses of uh, Stellara. Same thing if you think about the so-called adverse events of interest, so serious infections, opportunistic infections, uh, skin cancers, other uh, non, uh, so non-melanoma skin cancers, other forms of cancer. Uh, all these things occurred at very low rates and um, at similar rates in patients who were receiving placebo and, and drugs. So in this particular trial, it, it looked like the safety of Stellara was very similar to what you would expect in this patient population without uh, Stellara. And then if you look at the larger experience of Stellara in Crohn's disease and in psoriasis and in psoriatic arthritis, uh, where there's been you know a longer experience with the drug both in clinical trials and on the in marketed use. Um, that safety profile that we observed in the maintenance study of Stellar in patients with ulcerative colitis is really very similar to what's been seen in these larger experiences for longer periods of time in other diseases. So it's, it's as biologic drugs go, if you think about anti-TNF drugs like Remicade and Humira, they have black box warnings around lymphoma, they had black box warnings around uh, tuberculosis, fungal infections, other serious and opportunistic infections. Um, Stellara doesn't have those black box warnings, and we didn't see, you know, increased rates of, of those types of events during the Stellara ulcerative colitis maintenance trial. Well, we'd like to uh, get some more information on Stellara and uh, its potential as this, as a treatment uh, for UC. Where can we go online and get some more information about this phase three study? Well, I think uh, the study was presented to the European Crohn's. I didn't care about it. Digestive Disease Week is in San Diego in May, and these data will also be presented again in the United States in May during Digestive Disease Week. So there should be a lot of information about it coming, and of course, it'll eventually be published in, in full report in a medical journal. Well, I appreciate you uh, coming in and giving us this information. Nice to talk to you. You as well. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, in conversation with Dr. William Sanborn of the University of California, San Diego, talking about his presentation of the Pivotal Phase 3 data for Stellara. Transcripts and audio of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. Thank you for listening to Health Professional Radio. We're very proud to be an independent broadcaster providing our content free of charge to you, the listener. One of the ways that we're able to remain free and independent is by having people like you become patrons. You can support Health Professional Radio simply by visiting hpr.fm and clicking the button that says Become a Patron. Your patronage of even just $1 a month lets us know that you're there, which in turn makes us more valuable to advertisers. And, of course, if you're able to afford more, then we would certainly appreciate the support. My name is Toby Longhurst from Health Professional Radio please visit hpr.fm, click the Become a Patron button and support us if you can.